Okay, 4.2, maximum minimum values. A function has a local relative maximum value, f at c, at x equals c, if the following is true. If f at c, the y value, is greater than all the other y values close to that original point c. So on either side of C, the values are going to be smaller. So F at C is greater. What you're looking at here is, for example, when you see a point where you have a maximum, and let's say that point is C, this point here is C, on either side, whether there be on the left side or the right side, those y values are actually lower than the y value at point C. For a function that has a local minimum value, f at C, at x equals C, happens if f at C is less than f at x when x is close to c. So what that means is when we're looking at a minimum, we have a point, let's say c, on either side of c, those y values are actually higher than the original c, the y value at c, so that it is a local minimum. Now, a function has an absolute or global maximum value, f at c, at x equals c, if f at c is greater than f at x for all x in the domain of f at x. And a function has an absolute global minimum value, f at c, at x equals c, if f at c is less than f at x for all x in the domain of f at x. What that means is in order to have a maximum value, an absolute maximum, it must be a maximum all the time. So for example, in a parabola that opens down, that will have an absolute maximum. And for the parabola that opens up, that would be an absolute minimum. Next, note, a local maximum in value cannot occur at endpoints on closed interval functions because you cannot see both sides. Only absolute maximum minimums can be at endpoints. So you can have a local, but you can have an absolute value. Let's keep going. You're asked to identify the local and absolute extrema on this graph. So where they would locate it would be at those red dots. These red dots would, bear, would be a place where you could see local and or absolute extrema. So let's look at what they are individually. So you have some function f at x. That point in particular right there would be known as an absolute max. And it's also a local max. It's local because on either side I can test it and determine that must be a local maximum. Next, let's say that point there. That point is a local minimum, not an absolute minimum because there's a point even lower than that. That endpoint that's pointed there with the green arrow is an absolute minimum. It can't be local because we don't see both sides. And the very first one, highlighted in or as arrowed in orange, means that this one is neither a local max or local min. The, I mean, sorry, uh, absolute max or absolute min. It is an endpoint, so we are at, because it's an endpoint, we are unable to be able to determine a local and it's not absolute because there's actually a value that's even higher. Alright, critical point. 
A number c in the domain of f at x is known as a critical number if either f prime of x c is equal to zero or f prime at c does not exist. A critical point is an x value where the first row is equal to zero or there's an asymptote and that critical point will be c and f at c, c being the x value f at c being the y value. Fermat's theorem states the following. If f at x has a local extrema at x equals c, then either f prime at c is equal to zero or f prime at c does not exist. What that means is that if you're told that there is a local extrema, then you know for a fact that the second derivative is equal to, sorry, the first derivative is equal to zero at that particular point. Or the first derivative does not exist. There is no value for the first derivative. So Fermat's theorem does not work backwards. That means that you cannot go backwards with that statement. It must only go forwards. What this is on the bottom is just an example of where we could have things happen to us. x cubed, you're asked to find the derivative of x cubed. Set it equal to zero, you find out that x equals zero. But when we test the points from negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity zero and zero and infinity, you find out that for both, the first derivative is going to be greater than zero. So this function, although it looks like there might be one at zero, turns out to be increasing on both sides of the zero that we found. So a change in, and there is no change in direction. It looks like there might be, but it actually doesn't happen. All right. Use the first derivative test to determine if a critical point is a maximum, minimum, or neither. If f prime at x changes from positive to negative before and after that point c, then it's a local max. If f prime of x changes from negative to positive before and after x equals c, it's known as a local minimum. If f prime of x does not change signs, therefore it's neither. All right, let's keep moving forwards. Example number two, determine any maximum or minimum points for f at x is equal to some function. First thing you do is you ask to read, you reread the question and determine the important pieces. You're asked to determine maximum or minimum. Maximum or minimum means you need to do the first derivative. So we set the first derivative equal to zero. That turns out to be two values for x, 2 and negative 1. So we need to set our intervals from negative infinity to negative 1, from 2, negative 1 to 2, and 2 to infinity. The question that folks might have is why do we have to do this? Well, remember earlier. And let's go back. Earlier, we talked about that in order to determine if it is a critical point, is a max or min, you need to know if the first derivative changes from positive to negative. So we can use the first derivative test to test maximum, minimum, or neither. So let's go and do that. So find the derivative. Take, factor the derivative, and test your intervals. When you do a test point, you find out that there's a change in direction. The change in direction happens at negative 1 and at 2, and this is what we need to determine. So, here we go. Okay, what you see here, let's look at this. We set the derivative equal to 0 as we see here, 
we factor the expression, we find the two values. This is the intervals in which we could determine whether there are any maximum minimum points. These values are our critical points, which we use some test points into the first derivative to determine what's happening. You see that at negative 1, the value is 7 over 2 when you plug it in. At 2, the value is negative 10. But here, we see a change. We see that the derivative in this interval is increasing, then it's decreasing, then it's increasing. What that means is that from increasing to decreasing, there is a local max. From decreasing to increasing, it means there's a local min. So at these points, there's a local max and a local min. Now this is a cubic function. These values that we have here are not absolute because this is a cubic function. And as you learned in grade 12, or advanced functions, the cubic function has arrows that go in opposite directions. So therefore, they continue on forever and ever. The range will always y belong to real. So you can only have a local min or a local max. Alright, enough of video 1. We'll go on to video 2.